Uh, well, uh, the speech of Mr. Palmer, we just enjoyed, uh, we, was about the macro, macro level view about different inter integration policy models which are applied in Europe. Uh, I am in my presentation going to look at the same phenomena bottom up and concentrate on, on meso level and uh, maybe even a micro level. Uh, and talk about different ways in which people of migrant backgrounds uh, can be socially, politically and culturally embedded, uh, at least in Estonia. And I'm going to point on the connections uh, between the different patterns of integration and people's social and cultural capitals on the have, and also social <coughs> backgrounds. As a central idea of this conference is to explore the role of culture in the integration, I will discuss the roles and the forms of the culture vis-à-vis -vis to those integration patterns. Uh, I promised uh, uh, myself when I prepared this presentation that I keep from poorly theoretical uh, passages, but uh, still uh, I would like at least um, point some things. Uh, at first, uh, I would like to point the culture as a very powerful embedded, embedding me mechanism uh, that really links a structure and agency. Is it individuals or, or collective agents in a sort of dynamic relationship that makes meaning and, and, and legitimizes something? And here you can see the quotation from famous sociologist Anthony Kiddans. He has been criticized a lot, but still his view is very, very influential in, uh, in <coughs> sociology and, uh, and in social sciences in general. Uh, to, to put it simple, uh, because maybe this quotation is quite tricky to read, to put it simple, we can speak about the culture as a huge body of cultural resources as a provisions and at the same time constraints that are continually recreated by the activities of individuals and, and collective agents, agencies. And to put it even more simple, the process is dual and it's never ending and we should speak not only about the impact of culture on integration but also vice versa the impact of integration on the culture. We must be ready for that, otherwise it's quite senseless to, to continue to talk. And uh, I noticed that the participants on this conference represent really multifarious spheres of creative activity, and I would like to suggest to be very reflexive about themselves and, and the things you are, and have a really very long-term vision in, in coming workshops, because culture is is quite inertial thing. So I'm going, I prepared one slide to our guests, but I'm going to skip it because I'm afraid there will be a shortage of, uh, of time. And I'm um, going strictly to the subject of the study. Uh, Mr. Palmer already mentioned cities as, as a labs. Actually, Estonia, together with Latvia, have been a sort of social lab or experiment in the integration of ethnic minorities in the European economic and political <coughs> context as a whole society. And uh, I believe that actually this uh, analysis uh, can be quite informative for policymakers all over Europe. Uh, why? Because uh, of the large, large proportion <coughs> The relatively homogeneous uh, institutional socialization patterns, I mean here, yeah, educational socialization, and uh, relatively wide, wide variation of education and social stratification characteristics of the Russian population in Estonia. If we compare, for example, with migrants in, who are residing in European cities, it is teaches relatively homogeneous. And from one side, and relatively wide <coughs> from, from the other end. Uh, speaking about education, social stratification. And that's why I believe that actually this uh, uh, the different ways of, of uh, uh, integration has, uh, has gone in Estonia. <coughs> I really 
are very well traceable and, and we can compare the different subgroups. Uh, I was an academic team leader of the research group who conducted um, the last Estonian integration, integration monitoring, which was commis commissioned by Minister Kaltje of Estonia. And uh, this is one part of the work we did, I'm going to share with you today. Uh, in general, there are many ways to measure the integration of immigrants in, this, uh, in, in Europe that are, are used in academic papers and in more applied research. Um, the current Estonian integration program uses, uses the divisions, uh, structural divisions between uh, legal and political, social, economic and educational and cultural integration. However, when we planned this integration monitoring project, we were encouraged to, to seek for more um, socially sensitive and new ways to, to diagnose problems and define the target groups of the policies. And um, mm, that was the thing we did, actually. Uh, we made a cluster analysis um, but that was built on three sets of so-called aggregated variables, that means the single questions are put in together, each together and, and, and then analyzed as, as one variable. And the first two um, layers, the political self-determination, which means uh, in citizenship and, and the attitudes um, that are connected with that, and the political involvement, participation on, on the elections and so on, is quite clear and traditional uh, look, and also the student language skills and linguistic practices, which is very central in, in, in local in Estonia. Uh, and uh, that is a new dimension. We seek for um, some kind of measure, or which, <coughs> which really could describe uh, the mediated and immediate participation in the public sphere without any formal political, political um, let's say, borders. A non-formal political participation and also civic involvement in NGOs. And we get uh, three sets of variables and each set in, it actually involves variables uh, that, that describe structural levels of integration, something so-called objective like citizenship or NGO membership and variables that reflect um, personal perceptions and, and practices. For example, what country is regarded to be a uh, homeland and, and what language is spoken uh, with ethnic Estonians. So, uh, here is um, <coughs> output. Um, this slide draws a very general structure of clusters, of the clusters according to their main constituent variables. The zero level here in this graph is um, symbolic, I would say, and this marks uh, a mean score of relevant variable in the total sample. And the vertical columns here uh, mark differences of mean scores of the same variable in cluster, cluster subsamples, that means subgroups, compared to the average mean. So there are not natural numbers here, but, but they are like relative, relative distances. I'm, I will come back to this picture uh, later on when I introduce the different clusters. Uh, but here I would like to <coughs> point your attention on these main, main dimensions. Here is this political involvement dimension. We can see certain patterns, different patterns which describes the different clusters. Here is the linguistic dimension. Here is this in, informal political activity. I'm going to explain uh, a little bit further what uh, does it mean. Also participation in public non-political events like sports and cultural events. It's so important because uh, these kinds of uh, kind of, of events create certain common communication sphere and, and also may we create temporal sense of belonging. That's why we regard it important. Also, we measured subjective, <coughs> I would call it informa informational security. How well I consider or feel myself. Uh, am I well informed about what is going on in Estonia or badly informed? It's a certain feeling of security. 
And then this is uh, clear, and then that is trust towards institutions, which is aggregated variable again, that means uh, many different institutions are put together, and it's um, sort of a generalization. And we can see that these clusters, uh, these fluctuations are in different places. But now I'm going to, uh, to introduce uh, all these clusters uh, in detail. And the first cluster is, uh, is characterized by high Estonian language proficient uh, skills. That means it's linguistic, in linguistic sense, this integration has gone well. And also, a uh, majority of people belonging to this cluster <coughs> group have Estonian citizenship. Uh, they feel themselves quite secure in the informational sense. They regard themselves very well informed. And uh, they also show significant participation in public cultural and sports events. That means they participate somehow in this public common, common sphere or common, common space. And also relatively high trust towards institutions. And here are um, <coughs> uh, the differences, um, what can be described as, as really significant things that, um, uh, that makes, uh, not, not makes a cluster, but characterizes cluster. These in, in this gray area are the variables that make the cluster. <coughs> but uh, after making this grouping, uh, we can discover other variables which are really significant uh, somehow in, in formation of a certain pattern of integration. And what we can see here, uh, media consumption is, is very decisive here in the formation of this type of pattern. Uh, uh, because est especially Estonian language media that are important and trusted, that doesn't mean that uh, local Russian language media channels or, or media people are second or third generation in Estonia. Um, there are <coughs> about 40% percent people who have their grandparents who have been born in Estonia. And that's this important, important thing I'm going to <coughs> back to this a little bit further. Uh, about this ethno uh, so, uh, sociodemographic uh, composition, it's, we can see that it is a pattern of more young people, I would say. Also, the pattern of uh, educated people. <coughs> and uh, um, people, uh, these people have acquired relatively higher social status in, uh, in Estonian society. So, all these are. Uh, characteristics which are significant here. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, this uh, ethnocultural um, side? Ethnocultural self-determination is considered to be important both as general, I would say grand narrative. Here is uh, uh, the agreement in different clusters to the statement, today it's absolutely necessary that the person who would feel uh, ethnicity membership that is a certain type of general narrative, that is, it, it's normal to have ethnicity. And also, as a personal ethnic group with an identification, we measured also um, as a feeling of group attachment with a uh, of different attributes. But, uh, however, <coughs> this group of people don't wish to identify themselves with my, so-called minority issues and, and stand for collective rights, there are just um, some snippings that illustrate um, this argument. They are quite skeptical uh, about the need for a special lang Russian language television program, for example, in public service broadcasting. And they hold a uh, quite positive assessment on the possibility for high quality education for Russian youth. That's all this attribute that. Uh, what's well, special for this pattern or cluster. Uh, so, we may ask about the role of culture in, in, in this pattern. It seems that the picture is very beautiful and, um, and there is no problems. Um, I would like to stress that uh, uh, many researchers, including myself, have pointed out that it is, uh, it is like an individual coping pattern, that the deciding moment is individual agency who invests money and then an energy and then so on due to this, um, Tate Leighton has, has called it competitive assimilation cascade. 
and his uh, quotation uh, of, of his uh, observation he made in, uh, in the middle of the 90s. However, now I'm coming to conclusions that uh, it's, it's, it's not so, that simple, that the impact of, of structural provisions is, is very, very high in this pattern. There are strong networks, personal ties, and, and, and this participation in the public sphere, and at the same time and place of the presidency, as giving us advantage <coughs> to this pattern. And um, now it seems that um, the structural provisions, I would, I would call them structural provisions, can also in certain cases transform into constraints to the development of identity of these people. Uh, because their cultural, including also, for example, linguistic practices, may be in, uh, sometimes in quite vulnerable position uh, and that can serve as material for boundary building. There are just some quotations I, uh, I have made, a lot of depth interviews, and uh, there are just some, uh, some quotations. The first one uh, speaks about the attitude from majority members uh, who, in, in let's say, competitive surroundings, start to, to use, uh, let's say, language, language errors as an excluding mechanism. Uh, the second quotation is uh, from uh, from one Russian gentleman who was very annoyed uh, by by several women, as he said, who use unnecessary Estonian words. And he expressed that, I feel that those people are not ours, for example. And here is, uh, is um, a quotation from, uh, from one, let's say, uh, linguistically well-integrated young lady who feels uh, herself very uncomfortable when being in, in different com <coughs> uh, companies because she has friends uh, among Estonians and among Russians. And of course, it's um, uh, it um, seems that it's mission impossible to to cover somehow these uh, interpersonal processes. And but um, <coughs> one one uh, suggestion that can really uh, be uh, and, uh, given here is uh, uh, to try to, to shape. Public, public representation, or I would even say the media culture, and, and really uh, <coughs> uh, shift uh, to more encouraging public uh, representation of personal and, and, and subcultural varieties and self-expressions. Culture is changing, and, and uh, <coughs> there is nothing we, we can do about that. Varieties of self-expression, linguistic, emotive, all other cultural practices. Um, I would say we, we need to normalize this merging, um, merging different cultures and cultural er elements on individual level. It is, uh, it's not only the difference, let's say, in, in um, um, racial differences or linguistic differences. Sometimes differences that annoy us are much more, let's say, in details. So, uh, about the second cluster. The uh, second cluster uh, represents, um, by my mind, a somewhat novel pattern. Um, <coughs> uh, it can be described by uh, so called fulfilling linguistic de demands uh, because people belong, uh, who are belonging to this cluster have uh, acquired Estonian language. But uh, this, is, uh, this goes together with. Uh, uh, quite low trust uh, towards institutions and uh, relatively weak involvement at the na nation state level. For example, 40% uh, of, of these people don't have Estonian citizenship and they hold quite negative attitudes about uh, claiming Estonian citizenship. At the same time, uh, they show quite high civic involvement and they are very uh, active outside elections. Let me show you this uh, uh, this slide. It's it's a short short description of, of how active actually this group is. It's it's very different from the other patterns because among the other patterns, these percentages are 
would say five or ten percent. But here it's it's um, really majority of them have have participated in some kind of so-called informal uh, political political activities. And of course, the new media really is important here as the possibilities offered by new media. Uh, at the same time, it's, uh, it's quite um, surprising that they feel relatively low informational security. Uh, <clears throat> they don't uh, consider themselves very, very well informed what is uh, happening in Estonia. In Estonia. Also, almost all of them follow Estonian language media. Uh, it seems a little bit paradoxical, but I would explain that they are quite critical, quite critical, uh, let's say, followers or consumers of media, and they are quite sensitive about different different messages that um, actually uh, different media channels uh, <coughs> send out. Uh, as already said, uh, they are active in following Estonian language media channels, especially web portals and social media networks are very important for them. Uh, they hold quite critical opinion when uh, the people in first cluster were quite positive about the possibilities, for example, the educational possibilities. Uh, vice versa, this, um, <coughs> uh, people in this cluster are very critical. Uh, they are ready to leave Estonia, <coughs> so they are very mobile. Um, soon uh, migrating to some other European country or city. Uh, they have quite a high level of experience of interethnic conflicts. Most of them are actually mediated, happening somewhere in the web, not in person. And what is important, they feel multiple, they are car carriers of multiple ethnic identities. They feel belong to several ethnic groups. It's not mono, mono identity, it's multiple identity. So, um, about uh, this important socio-demographic variables, I would like to stress that uh, almost one half of them are foreign-born, and what is interesting, they are concentrating to certain areas, certain city areas, that means also uh, um, <coughs> that this kind of, I would say, subculture, uh, is, uh, is shared in, in certain, certain it, it's not only virtual, it's, it's somehow also physical, physical environments, very, very concentrated environments that may create this kind of, uh, this kind of um, pattern. So, uh, it's interesting uh, to speak about the role of culture in, in this uh, subgroup or in case of this, this kind of pattern of cultural integration. As I already said, many of the members are carriers of multiple ethnic identities, and that's actually not, not, not the point, because ethnic categories are not significant in their self-determination de de at all. Their social solidarities are fluid and, 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 and temporal, and, and created and recreated in these networks. And <coughs> um, at least the Estonian experience reveals the importance of popular and consumer cultures. They have like developed the global global language, let's say, about these various brands, fashion brands and so on, really to communicate, to share their likes and dislikes. And as a got sophisticated consumers, they have um, really new type of cultural capital and then they are maneuvering in, in the social power relations. And uh, instead of big narratives as uh, ethnic, ethnic identity or national identity, they do have their own small narratives. Uh, it's just uh, two, two more quotations from different people, uh, Russian and Russian male respondent and Estonian female respondent. And actually you can see that they even use really the same, same global brand language. And there is one, one bad brand. <laughs> Which is sign of a bad taste and, and let's say <laughs> uh, one of the one of the behavior and then they are like ascribing to each other this um, this, uh, uh, this wrong uh, wrong uh, way of, of behavior. <coughs> Actually, really, this uh, global popular culture and, and this consumer culture is, is 
is very, very important. Yeah. When I discussed uh, uh, this topic with, uh, with my colleagues, and uh, we discussed that who actually uh, knows how to communicate with, with this group of people. And, and then one, uh, one uh, member of the group says, oh, I know department stores. <laughs> uh, that it's really so. Uh, so it's a uh, new generation who I believe is common in other European cities as well. And um, I would say um, that the European society is lack at the moment, I recipe, how you communicate with these young people uh, who are on migrant family backgrounds, but also majority youth who are very critical or sometimes even arrogant towards official policy initiatives and who are actually able to mobilize very flexibly and temporarily in social networks. And, and they actually need, um, by my mind, new design of, of, of new policy models. And I was thinking what might help maybe the consumer society and the use culture, this cooperation with researchers of use culture, very, very productive there. And also um, old and new theories of network society really help. Not, not, not so much as traditional political theories. And um, there are just some ideas for the local context, uh, especially about this media, media culture and media market, because um, uh, it is quite influential in, in uh, really trying to make the contact with, with this group. But maybe we should think about new forms of public-private partnership. Anyway, this uh, time of, of public broadcasting as a leading leading um, force in national national states are going to <coughs> uh, to pass uh, gradually, uh, and uh, maybe we should think about that. And also uh, maybe about um, an idea about training personal say, technical skills or literacy. Uh, at least <coughs> about Estonia, I, I know um, from qualitative studies we have done that uh, they are very active as uh, media users, uh, readers and, and writers. Uh, and, and their media following patterns are very multifarious. But actually, they lack uh, quite elementary skills uh, to discern, for example, manipulation or full journalistic quality, they need some, I would say, <coughs> technical skills. Maybe they are quite skeptical about um, grand narratives and ideologies, but they might uh, be quite, um, quite a good audience to, to learn uh, so for technical skills. So, about the third cluster, which is a little bit uh, opposite to that, the second one. Uh, people belonging to this group or cluster are um, Estonian citizens. You can see the rate of citizenship is, is even higher uh, than in first cluster here. But at the same time, it's combined with the modest Estonian language skills. Make most of them know Estonian more or less passively. They can understand what means express themselves. In. And the political and civic participation, maybe, for this linguistic reason, is rather limited. But they, at the same time, can really be called as a Russian-speaking Estonian patriots, uh, because they regard Estonia as their only homeland. And it's a nice detail, by my mind, which is very specific, especially to this cluster. They, for example, feel, feel proud and pleased when, uh, let's say, the Russian people are recognizing Estonia society which is quite significant. And they are characterized by this, uh, also by rootedness. Many generations in Estonia here. Also education is quite important here in, in formation of this kind of pattern. And uh, what uh, forms this pattern also are limited possibilities for internet economy. So the, let's say this patriotism is more, is more abstract than uh, uh, more based on, on really grand narratives and less on um, interpersonal contacts. Uh, and um, in general, these um, uh, members of this cluster expect a, a really more active role of media in the in integration process because it's uh, practically the only source is mass media because they lack inter interpersonal contacts. 
and because of this uh, language uh, limits, they cannot follow Estonian language media. So, uh, <coughs> uh, the need for for bringing more Estonian <coughs> topics to Russian language media is, is, is really essential. Um, I was thinking that uh, it's it's a very old graph, and I'm not going to very detail in explaining it. Um, it's a graph I made in in, in the beginning of, of 2000. But it seems that these people have somehow straightly transformed their loyalty as a Soviet citizen to to being as a Estonian citizen because they are mostly old old people who are socialized in, in Soviet. Soviet time and then somehow um, they, that seems to be um, so-called direct, I would say, you know, theoretical, theoretical um, transformation uh, because uh, as they live largely in the northeastern part of Estonia, they really lack this personal, personal attachment. Okay, what about the ethnocultural um, self-determination? Um, <coughs> Uh, it is important, but uh, still uh, the attitudes of, of this group vis-à-vis -vis US ethnic issues and policies are not so, so ambitious and, and they <clears throat> also they would benefit from, let's say, structural level collective solutions that would lo lower the linguistic barriers and increase uh, possibilities to participate. Uh, they, are, they are not um, <clears throat> I would say ready to, to, to raise some kind of collective collective uh, requirements, but uh, it is not so in the fourth cluster. I'm going to look at the fourth and fifth cluster together in order to save time. Uh, and in according to some variables, they are really quite similar. They both lack uh, linguistic and political, I would say, states the specific capitals as, as uh, researchers of labor market use, use this term. And they show uh, relatively low participation in civic associations and public events, and also um, the fifth cluster of quite low informational security. Uh, but uh, according to other variables, they are quite different. And the cluster uh, four, is, uh, is <coughs> more demanding. Uh, for example, they um, demand for um, Russian language tele tele television program. Um, cluster 5 is quite arrogant, or no, it has no opinion about these issues. Uh, also, the cluster 4 has a very strong bond uh, <coughs> with ethnic group via various cultural attributes. Whereas um, cluster um, five has quite weak one, um, and there is just one one uh, example about the uh, let's say symbolic ties uh, with the uh, Russian Federation cluster four show quite high awareness and also active personal celebration of the holidays. Uh, <coughs> so uh, also both cluster uh, largely include include older people with, with Russian citizenship or undetermined citizenship who both lack Estonian language skills to operate in Estonian society. Actually, these patterns are different. Uh, the four represents a group with minimal ambitions and resources for participation in politics, uh, also civil society, and they are quite satisfied with so-called social citizenship. But Cluster 4 is an outcome of the process, I would say, call it ethnization during this post Soviet transition. They were, let's say, so, social uh, Soviet citizens, but they have become Russians now during these uh, 20 years. And they show the strongest form with ethnicity and define the Russianness on the basis uh, of a wide range of cultural attributes. And it is partly similar to the diaspora pattern because they really have Russian citizenship and and, and uh, they are more tied with, with Russia. But from the other angle, uh, angle, they have a great deal in common with uh, Estonians because they use the uh, same ethnic identity building pattern 
which is centered to ethnocultural attributes, especially language, and who by design is quite defensive and, and uh, express minority and uh, position who is in danger. Uh, so this group is one who is most ready to turn their cultural distinction into collective resource and to claim special treatment in education, media policy, and elsewhere. And to the lack of citizenship, their political <coughs> participation is limited to the local level. But actually, they have used opportunities. And here, culture, culture, of course, is the most promising because it's important. It's, it's really important in ethnic sense to this community. That's why it's promising language of, of communication or even tool of integration. But at the same time, it, time it is very, very sensitive and, and sometimes also constraining because of the diaspora politics of the Russian Federation, which, um, according to my est estimation, of course, there are organizations who know better this diaspora politics of the Russian Federation, but there is certain turn from, let's say, civic issues to culture. So it's a little bit uh, a tricky, tricky thing. And um, uh, as I tried to show with my presentation, there are actually many faces of cultures. And I would suggest when we have these workshops uh, today and tomorrow, um, to, to think about, um, say, two axes or organize our, um, our, our thoughts and wanting to, to do axes at least. The first uh, express the question about what, what culture? Is it the same old culture or something new? Because as I said in the beginning, there is no, uh, uh, the in uh, integration has impact to the culture. We can, uh, cannot uh, ignore this fact. Uh, whether it's about the dynam dy dynamism, about the new and mer merged forms of individual and collective self-expression, or and there is uh, um, the, the value is stability. And whether we have individual agents uh, who, uh, we can, with whom we can communicate via mass communication and, and shaping media culture, and where the cycles of intervention are really very long ones, or we do have collective institutional agents where we can really have a positive communication <coughs> and networks and partnerships. And that's a paradox, that at the same time we have to go in different directions. And here I'm going to end my presentation. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alexander Dusso and I represent the Hidro uh, uh, County. Uh, my question concerns to the uh, intellectual leader uh, and uh, distribution this leader between all five clusters. Because my mind is very important to understand uh, without it is impossible to promote new ideas and culture policy. Uh, what do you think about distribution a little between all five clusters? How many in the first, second, five? Um, it depends how we define leaders. No, culture. <laughs> cultural leaders. Um, I believe that uh, there are um, leaders in uh, some leaders in, in each cluster. Maybe the fifth cluster is, is without cultural leadership. Uh, but they, I would say, reside in different, different um, spheres and, and, and areas. Uh, speaking about, uh, about uh, uh, this, uh, let's say, fourth cluster, we have uh, political leaders as well, and cultural leaders who, who really are speaking about, uh, about this uh, <coughs> ethnic importance of ethnic ties. Uh, but, uh, um, let's say, these cultural leaders um, for the second cluster, which was uh, young and rebellious leaders, they, I, I suspect, sit in the companies, in private companies, and um, create some kind of marketing strategies and so on. And the leaders, actually, the first cluster, um, their leaders uh, are gradually now um, going to be empowered 
both politically and, and socially. And I believe a big share of these leaders actually sit here in this auditorium. So uh, it's not distributed only, uh, it's, it's distributed not equally, but each is faster as its own leader.
Selgi ma tõen kõik isegi ma ei tea, ma olis praegu Eesti keeles nii lihtsam. Riit teeb väga kehedad kuulustud kolmanda sektoriga ja me mõelda, et internetsiooni poliitika ongi meil ei suunatud, et me kokkusime tegevuse tegelikult suura ministeriumist välja. Anname läbi kõrgi taotust tegevusteks toetust ja Kui teeme üldse tehed, et koostad just suuremate kodaniku ühiskonna kantusorganisatsioonidega. Näiteks me oleme annud toetus selleks, et sotsiaali meediat ja ka ihmesõguseid veidi lehekülgi oleksid aru saadavad ühles keeles, et oleks ka vene keeles ja inglise keeles. Me oleme toetanud nüüd meid ühiseid algatusi, mis puudutab kodaniku ühiskond erinevates valdkondades. Ja seoses näiteks kodakontsusega ja kodakontsuse propageerimisega meil on väga lihe koostööd. Ma ei tea, mida te konkreetselt siimas peate, aga põhimõtteliselt on siiski meie eesmärk aktiveerida kodaniku ühiskonda ja aktiveerida just tõnekeelselt elanikud on selleks, et nad aktiivselt oleksid kaasatud erinevate organisioonide tegevustesse ja et oleks ka hea koostöö kohalik kohalitsuse kasvatud. See on meie eesmärk. Kas on veel mõni küsimus või kommentaar? Paistavad, et rohkem küsimus ei ole, aga et me oleme läinud neli minutit üle, siis ma arvan, et täh, tegid. Ette kandeks!